everybody, and welcome again to Faith on Friday Extra. This series is all about highlighting people, topics, and businesses that I know you will find inspiring, interesting, and always encouraging. And I'm your host, Ricky Smith. Y'all, we are going back to Canada today. We are going to talk to somebody who has firsthand knowledge of some of the things that we're seeing in the news, but you may not have ever had the opportunity to talk to somebody about. So this beautiful woman, her name is Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Michelle is a mother. She is a business owner. She is a wife. And she's just freaking kind of awesome in my book. But what we're going to talk about, Michelle, we are going to talk about your family, and in particular, your two sons. So let's just kind of, I know it's such a teaser, aren't I? It's horrible. First of all, Michelle, tell us where you're located in Canada. I am in the greater Vancouver, British Columbia area of Canada. So Pacific Coast, just north of Seattle. Uh, okay, see, that makes better sense. But you have to tell everybody, what's the little town that you live in? So the city I live in is named Coquitlam, but nobody can say it and nobody knows where it is. So I just say I'm from Vancouver. There you go. And that is perfectly fine because I can say Vancouver. That is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us to talk about, to me, a very important topic today. So first of all, tell me about your kids. Oh, Ricky, I have two beautiful boys. They are, as of this recording, just about 12. I'm no longer allowed to say 11. And almost 17. Okay. They're amazing. They are fabulous. And tell me about, because they're adopted, correct? Yes, they are. Okay. Tell me a little bit about their adoption. Well, I'll start by telling you that Canada relies on immigration for mm -hmm. population growth, and I'm a real big fan of that. So both of my boys were actually born in the United States and okay. adopted shortly after birth, my oldest at 23 hours and my youngest at four weeks, and brought back to Canada. So you were literally a brand new mommy with newborn babies. Pretty much. How exciting for you-ish? Terrifying. <laughs> I mean, you have the same issues and concerns that all new mommies had, right? You've yeah, got except exactly. I didn't have nine months to get ready for either yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Here you, here's your kid. Have a super great day. I understand. But what people don't know is that Michelle has two little brown babies. What's their ethnicity, Michelle? Well, my oldest son, uh, his birth mother is El Salvadorian and his mm -hmm. birth father is Mexican. Okay. My youngest son, his birth mother is Puerto Rican and his birth father is Black. Oh, there you go. So needless to say, she has some pretty babies, y'all. <laughs> I do. Now, Michelle, we started this talking about, you know, in the news, you see so much going on with these black kids and kids of color and brown babies really struggling in society simply because of the color of their skin. A lot of it is at the hands of folks who are white. And so here you are, you and your husband are white folks, and y'all are raising two brown boys. Have you guys had any challenges, or what challenges have you all had with your boys? Well, I'll start by saying, clearly I'm the whitest member in my house. <laughs> and, um, my husband likes to joke that in family pictures, we can't have a white background because you'll lose me. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's true. Um, so given that my boys are dark, we made the decision when they were, when we brought them home, really, that adoption was going to be an open topic of conversation. We did not ever want them wondering why there was such a big difference in color in our house. We also felt that it would be better to arm them with some tools and some strategies to answer questions and comments, some of them completely innocent and some of them not so innocent about the fact that our family looks different. And so that I'll start by saying we're really open about their adoptions. And it's something that we discuss with them openly and openly with the public for that reason, so that we can kind of take away the big question mark when I say, oh, this is my son. And I watch people's faces as they go, oh, I am not seeing that connection. Right. <laughs> How did that happen? And, so, and then they start but, thinking, so what's your husband? You know, you yeah, get I like that. Um, mm -hmm. I have been asked that. And then, and then when I say my husband is not dark, they usually go, huh. 
And I watch them really trying to put that together. Yeah, but trying to do the Nobody math. wants to ask and they don't want to embarrass me. So I always say, look, my boys are adopted. So there yeah. you go. And they're like, oh, yeah. okay. Now and I so have So you connected the dots, if you will, for them. Yeah. Let me ask you, when you're out and about, especially when the boys were growing up and, and they were little, people are so much more tolerant of, of cute little kids anyway, regardless of the color of their skin. But as your boys got older, like you said, as of this recording, they are 12 and 17, is that right? Mm -hmm. So now you have got teenagers, for the lack of a better term. Has the, have the challenges changed or have the people's questioning stares or literally verbal comments, has that changed for you all? A little bit. Um, I think it's, it's more, the people who know us don't really care. Right. The people who, like when we're out and about in public, for example, I can think of one time I was out um, going to public transit with my younger son because he loves to do that. And he was running way ahead of me. And one of the workers in the area stopped him. And I saw him say, where's your mom? And my son turned around and pointed to me. And the guy looked at my son and looked at me and looked at him. And he's like, where? <laughs> Who? And I could see that he just wasn't putting it together. So I waved and yeah. came up. Yeah, yeah, it's me. Mm -hmm. You know, he was he was justifiably confused because he was looking for someone who looked like my son. That's your natural kind of inkling to think about. And clearly I didn't. Um, in his case, it was he was profusely apologetic. I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. I just really wanted to make sure this little guy was safe. Oh, that's totally fair. I couldn't agree with you more. I'd be questioning that too. Um, so things like that happen, which are mostly kind of humorous. Right. Um, but every now and again, we'll, we'll get something. I remember a lady walking up to me in Walmart. Mm -hmm. She just ran up out of nowhere and said, oh my God, where did you get him? And I thought like, I have four. Are they on sale? Like, what are yeah. we talking about here? <laughs> Do you mean is my son adopted? And she said, yes. Where did you get him? And I thought, hmm. I think sometimes it's that people don't have maybe the right words or they're yeah. unsure of what to say. And so a lot of what they say can come across really not appropriate. Yeah. Um, like, where did you get him? That, I'm sorry, as, as well-meaning as that may have sounded, that to me is kind of rude where did you get him like you stole him from someplace or like you said i got him at aisle five you know you can get two for one i you know something like that especially here in the u.s and you know we have so many things going on with you know the racial injustice here and so much of that going is it the same in canada or is it different it's a little more subtle but it mm -hmm. is there Really? It's definitely there. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I'll explain it to you this way. It's not something that I personally have really experienced. Sure. So I am learning about this through the eyes of my children. Wow. Right? I, mm -hmm. I, I don't necessarily anticipate things happening, but when they do, I have a real perspective check for yeah. me about. Yeah what what other people see or what my child's experience of this is mm -hmm. so for mm -hmm. example um the george floyd situation i was gonna ask yeah absolutely horrible i'll start there mm -hmm. wrong on and on every level and um i was really concerned my oldest son has some pretty significant special needs so he mm -hmm. doesn't really notice and as far as right. he's concerned really that forms a bit of a protective layer around him because police are his friend. When they see him, they respond to him differently because he's visibly got disabilities. And that is a protective layer. And so he sees the police as like the good guys. And sure. in his world, that's what they are. Mm -hmm. My younger son though is a neurotypical kid. And we were concerned about what he was going to, how are we going to handle this? How are we going to explain this situation to him? What was his experience of it going to be? How could we, because we look different, we are the two colors that were involved. And how are we going to explain this mm -hmm. in a way that he could understand he's 12, right? but also in a way that gives honor to him and his questions and his feelings. And 
So for a long time, we didn't let him see the news is really the answer we came to. But then we did. And we sat him down and we watched it. And, and we sat kind of quietly and just waited to see what he was going to come up with. And his question was, Mama, why would someone who looks like you do something like that to someone who looks like me? Wow. And a child shall lead them. You know, that is, is so hard and it can be so incredibly heartbreaking. What did you tell him? I told him that sometimes people are afraid of those they think are different. Mm. And that fear makes us do terrible things. Right. We right. can. And mm. he said, but I don't understand, Mama. On the inside, we're all the same. Mm. And I said, <laughs> yes, sweetheart, we are. Mm. And that was wrong, really wrong. And mm. fast forward to the most recent um, court case and that officer now being convicted, sure. I made sure that my son was watching that. And he was like, that's good. What that guy did was just wrong. And that's, <laughs> that's good. I'm glad that happened. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. he knew. Because what he <laughs> did was wrong. Sure. And we wanted him to That's see crazy. the conclusion of that. And we wanted him to see the riots. We wanted him to see, to hear and see it all. Because I wanted him to see power in the people. Yeah. The riots. That's huge. The, the, let me clarify. Mm. The protests. Mm. <laughs> get it right, girl. <laughs> I got to get it right. The protests were powerful. And I wanted him to see the power in people coming together in solidarity to to really say we're not okay with this injustice at all mm -hmm. and the power of that and i really wanted him to see it and they had uh, protests up here too and and i asked him if he wanted to go and if he had wanted to go i would have taken him in a heartbeat but he was very concerned with covid um and with my older son because he he can be um He's a little more closer to being immunocompromised, so we're being very careful of him with that. And so his answer was, I would go, Mom, but I think we need to just protect my brother, and that's first. And I said, okay. So we watched the protests, and we talked about them. We talked about why were people kneeling with their fist up, and why, what was all of that all about? We talked about... Um, how leaders, country leaders, responded mm -hmm. to things like that. Some of it was good, some of it not so good. Not so good. <laughs> not so good. And, and I wanted him to see it all because yeah. there's no, I think, how do I explain this? There were good things and bad things in all of it. So there was protests and rioters. And so we had to discuss the difference between the two. He's like, I don't understand why those people are stealing TVs. How does that help that cop go to jail? I'm like, well, it doesn't really. <laughs> We've had to explain that to ourselves, our kids and everybody else that we know. You know, yeah. but when you're looking at that, how far out of your comfort zone were those conversations? Very. Yeah. And if I'm honest, like I'm stumbling through it here with you, I stumbled through it there with him. Um, my son That's is awesome. a very intelligent child and I wanted him to see it, to yeah. see that struggle for me too, because I think that's important for him to understand that it isn't a situation always of us and them. It can be all of us together muddling our way through this and figuring it out and putting our foot in our mouths and taking our foot out of our mouths and, you know, really making mistakes and figuring it all out together is where the power is. And I want him to see that, that it isn't a situation of, at least in our house, that yeah. one group of people is more important or better than the other mm -hmm. for sure. And, and how so it's it. hard to see that when you, especially if you're into social media, if you're watching TV all the time, if you're listening to the news type deal, and you're, like I said, you're literally in another country watching what's going on in another country concerning people that look like your children and you who don't look like your children have to come up with a way to explain something that has never been your personal issue to a boy who doesn't get it yet but is seeing it. As a mother, I, I would hate to have to do that. Most parents can't handle the sex talk, let alone, mommy, how come they don't like me because I'm brown? Mm -hmm. That's tough. Have your kids had things in school that may have happened to them that they had to bring home and share with you that you had to help them through? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, again, my own being oblivious, 
Right. Um, my little guy came home, I think he was in grade one. And he said to me, mama, there's a boy in my class today who looks like me. Wow. And I thought, huh? Because it's a multicultural class. There's people of all backgrounds and ethnicities. But he was the only brown boy. And there was another boy who looked like him, mm. who was half black, half white, and mm. literally looked like him. Um, same kind of hair, same skin tone. And he was so taken with that boy. And it never dawned on me to think nobody in his class looked like him until he brought it home and mentioned yeah. it. And wow. so I reached out to his, that mom and I said, I said, uh, your son is gorgeous. And I want you to know what my son said. Could we, could we arrange some play dates for them to get together? And she's black. And, and I brought it to her attention that I am clearly not black. <laughs> I have questions and I don't know how to answer them. And yeah. I'm looking for support from women who do live this or have lived this or have had conversations around these things that I've never had before. And I need some wording. I need, I need to know if I'm being a complete moron in the things that I'm saying. Yeah. But see, I mean, that is so cute because so many moms who have racially different children, they won't reach out or they feel like they don't have to, or it's our family and none of your business. So I think that that, is, that says a lot about the woman that you are, the mommy you wanna be. And what you're looking at, you want your boys to be and, and be able to do and deal with. So I think that's cool. Do you spend a lot of time with trying to help them understand their heritage, like where you're from? Do you do a lot of that? Um, as it comes up, cause things will come up um, like, of course, with the George Floyd thing, there was discussions about slavery and all that kind of stuff. So that conversation came up and we had a look at that and you know, we got on the internet and, and did some looking at those things and talked about those things. And um, we, a little bit. So it really depends on what he's interested in and where things are going for him. Cause you know, the reality is he's 12 and most of what I say is like Charlie Brown's teacher. Wah, 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 wah. Like Nobody it's just cares. one turn right out the other. <laughs> exactly. So unless he's actually interested, yeah. it's not likely it's going to stick. But when he yeah. has these questions, he wants an answer. And sure. we, I often say to him, sweetheart, I don't have the answer for this. Why don't we go explore it together? Oh, that's and great. That's kind of the strategy we take. Yes. And so we come up with questions together and we think about like, well, what would, what do you think that would mean for you? And what would that mean for me? And and I'll be frank, I also have my mommy nine one one crew. Um, well, there you um, go. I love that. Mommy nine one one crew. My mommy nine one one. I crew. love it. <laughs> all black women mm -hmm. that have agreed to allow me to ask them the dumbest questions I can think of. <laughs> that is phenomenal. <laughs> Wow. So you can actually go to this mommy 911 crew and ask them things. What's the strangest question you think you've ever asked them? Okay. So Lily White me wanted to know what ashy skin was. <laughs> <laughs> I'd heard about it and my son was itchy and he's like, mom, why is my leg turning white? I'm like, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Stay right there. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, like, hang on to that thought. <laughs> Honestly, That's don't. Hilarious. And so, yeah, yeah I, that was sort of where it started. Yeah. And after they stopped laughing, yeah, um, I got some amazing <laughs> answers. And then, sure. um, you know, how to care for his hair. Yeah. Clearly, there's not too many curls right here, yeah. and <laughs> it's not something that I have a lot of experience with. Sure. And so, again, I'm like, um. So what do we do with this? <laughs> yeah. After, is, after they stop laughing. laughing. Again, you because we are gonna laugh at you, girl. It's not that we don't care, it's just cute. So we have to laugh. It's a thing. Yes. <laughs> and and I'm aware, and I usually start with so pasty white girl question here. <laughs> yeah. But you gotta go ask. But again, you asking those questions alleviates some other problems later. So going forward, Michelle, what scares you for your boys? I am concerned about my youngest driving. I think every parent's mm. concerned about that, but yeah, I think he'll be a good driver because I told him he'll never ever get my car if there's a ding or a, a scratch on it. Not it's not car. that. It's yeah. more about other people's responses to him being behind the wheel. Yeah, as a person of color, mm -hmm. um, 
how do I teach him to handle those situations? Because it, that is, again, not in the realm of my experience. Yeah. And so my mommy, my 911 crew, they're on standby for this. And we'll yeah. have conversations long before he gets there yeah. so that I can figure out and formulate some answers. Yeah. Um, but it breaks my heart a little mm -hmm. that I have to ask that question. And that his experience can't be the same as mine. And that's, that has to be heartbreaking, mm -hmm. you know, for you. I mean, I have two black sons and so I get it, but I've also been a black mommy for a really long time. That hasn't been your episode. That's not your testimony. So you're, you're going to have to go through this differently. And I'm mm -hmm. sure a lot of the mommies that are watching this, especially mommies of color and mommies of children of color understand this and their heart goes out to you as well you all look i appreciate you guys watching because there's so much that we can talk to michelle about and trust me all of her information will be down in the description and i'm sure she would love for you to reach out and maybe ask her some questions as well so that's going to be interesting so don't worry we can do that and don't forget if y'all haven't already subscribe to our youtube channel give us a thumbs up and we also want to hear a comment for you i'm looking forward to that but michelle my friend before I let you go, we have a game to play. Okay. Yes. So the game is called This or That. It's pretty simple. I'm going to give you the choice of two things and you, off the top of your head, just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I'm ready. Here we go. All right. All right. Android or iPhone? iPhone. Read the book or see the movie? Oh, read the book. Yeah, me too. Wallflower or life of the party? <laughs> party! Gotta, you better get this one right. <laughs> summertime fun or winter wonderland? Oh, summertime fun. Really? Even in Canada? I thought for sure you would well, say You know, we get a lot of snow. I like the summer. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Eat to live or live to eat? Oh, live to eat. <laughs> Out in nature or rather be in the house? Good question. I like a bit of both, but I'll go out in nature. Okay. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Good for you. We're all going to live longer for that. Drive the car or ride in the car? Drive it. Little control issues there, Michelle? Just know? a little. Okay, great. Moving on. <laughs> I like sports or I don't care? Don't care. So what was your first job growing up? Oh, my God. You're going to die. My very first job was milking goats on the farm across the street from my house. <laughs> I, I have absolutely no words for that, but maybe that's a thing in Canada. I don't know. <laughs> How old were you when you were milking goats? Probably eight or nine. Oh, did you get paid for it? Yes, she paid so me 75 cents a week. That was a real job. I'm impressed. Yeah. Michelle, thank you so much for your time. I thank you for your candor and your extreme authenticity on a subject that can be pretty tough. Oh, you are so welcome. And I'm always looking for more Mommy 911 people. Y'all heard it here first. So again, reach out. All right, everybody, that's it for us this time. But don't forget, join us next week on Extra. Mm -hmm.